and uh, welcome to uh, the 27th Leadership Leavers Lecture uh, by uh, Reena Jagdab. And as you were aware, she's going to be talking on a very, very interesting topic and absolutely rich content. I'm sure you're going to enjoy uh, over the next uh, few minutes, right? It's uh, on uh, brand management with digital world. And since all of us are part and some of you are uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, leading uh, on this front, you know, in terms of managing the brands on the digital world. And I'm sure it's going to be absolutely insightful and also with uh, actionable insights, if I may say so. And uh, just to give you a background about uh, 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 illustrious career of uh, Reena Jagdab, she is an MBA from St. Boris's International University, specializing in brand management. And also she is an a, a engineer. And most importantly, the kind of experience that she has already put for herself, right? Uh, before uh, she became the, uh, the lead uh, digital marketing at Henkel, and I'm sure Henkel you'd be knowing, uh, German multinational company started in 1876 with three very, very powerful uh, you know, business divisions, including uh, this, uh, you know, the, what they call is uh, their adhesives and uh, laundry and uh, home care. And, uh, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, this one, she has a, uh, she had a, wonderful and illustrious career with uh, our experience with uh, another uh, great brand uh, and that is Audi and where she was there for almost about six years and that's where she has done a phenomenal work which I'm sure she's going to showcase some of it to us and uh, that was going to tell you how uh, depth you know, uh, uh, you know the simple uh, ideas can be put together to create a world-class uh, campaigns and things like that. And also, most important thing that I will reserve the right to introduce herself because uh, uh, she has uh, made a beautiful slide for that as well. So therefore, uh, it's uh, my pleasure and honor to you, uh, uh, Rina, to welcome you to this 27th Le uh, Leadership Leaders Lecture and uh, look forward to having a wonderful and insightful session uh, for the next few minutes, uh, uh, Rina. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor, for basically having me here and uh, representing my learnings throughout my career, which I've had so far. Thanks for that great introduction. I'll uh, start by sharing my screen. Just give me a minute. Is it visible? It is, yeah, it is. Yeah. I just hope the sound thing works, but uh, I'll start nonetheless, then we can check. Yeah. yeah. We'll cross the bridge, not an issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically the topic for today, uh, everyone, good evening. Firstly, I'll be covering brand management in the digital world. Starting with an introduction to who I am, I am Reena Jagtap, like doctor just mentioned, and uh, I'm a manufacturing engineer. Uh, I've done my B in production engineering, post which I completed my MBA in brand communication and marketing management from Symbiosis, after which I worked with Edelman India on various brands. And then I moved on to Audi, where I handled the digital and PR for the luxury automobile brand in India. Uh, I've recently moved to Henkel as a lead digital marketing manager. I'm also an artist and I love painting uh, whenever I get the time to, so I just try and manage. Basically, these are the brand lives that I have touched upon till date. They include uh, Henkel's brand Loctite, uh, Skoda Auto Volkswagen in which I handled Audi as a brand, the IHCL, which is basically Indian Hotels Companies Limited, which is your Taj group of hotels. I worked on Starbucks, JLR, Dove, Tata Trust at Edelman. And I started my career with Larson and Dubrow uh, and I worked on Tech Mahindra as well. So this was after my engineering. A uh, quick start to basically the entire topic uh, that I'm here to represent today is basically what a brand is, right? Uh, a brand is an identity. It's basically an image. It's all about creating a perception in the mind of your consumers about who you are and what benefit you bring to them. And managing every aspect of the brand uh, online is something that drives me every day and I wake up to every single day. So... This is basically uh, something I'm going to touch upon today. 
in terms of branding i'll take you all through basically the difference between what is digital branding and digital marketing the digital traits that build brands and affecting uh, digital branding strategy the sos tac model and i'll give you all certain examples also in terms of how we actually use it to devise our planning and launch related communications and what is a sustainable digital branding strategy in terms of company strategies i'll take you all through some great work done by uh, indian as well as global brands and certain analysis from them and lastly i'll touch upon the consumer analytics so we've seen that covid had a big impact on what uh, and how consumers moved on to digital right it actually showed us how people uh, moved from the traditional ways of consuming content to more uh, digital ways of using it shopping from uh, basically home as well as uh, having installing multiple apps to basically get what you want at any time of the day is something that we've seen rise tremendously and i'll take you all through some stats uh, in the further slides we've seen speed convenience and price uh, are three key reasons that more and more consumers are now choosing digital first lifestyles moving on to branding uh, in the digital ecosystem the digital ecosystem is basically divided by five important d's right one is data second is direct to customer to your customer basically how you how we've seen that while amazon flipkart and all these other major players do sell different brands we've seen brands themselves also uh, who are utilizing platforms which are their own platforms to sell online uh democratization is another important factor which is basically adoption of technology has been increasing across uh demand is something that brands try to create day in and day out through digital we do it with a lot of innovative content ads and uh, native content as well and deals are something is basically which is like a, a quick solution right to draw your audiences to you so these are basically the five uh these that a digital ecosystem is created of and we've seen that within a few years digital basically will be the highest market share in terms of ad uh, investments here if you all see i've put in a short overview of the india india's digital media landscape we've seen that 2021 had spends of 70000 crores approximately in which digital ad uh, contribution was around 21000 crores and e-commerce specific uh, spends were 6300 crores so the scope of advertising in digital is huge we've seen growths on year on year basis this is a report by densu which i've been showcasing here and we've seen after television the next spends are on digital and then print earlier like say two years back itself uh we uh, in auto or if you see any other traditional sector which is you know uh, a very old method of advertising is we've seen print and ooh uh, as higher shares but this has drastically changed over the past two years we've seen higher spends on mobile uh, versus desktop and uh, moving on basically to what branding and marketing is the key differentiator Uh, your brand is made of multiple things right it's your design it's your logo it's the value that you showcase it's your trust and identity so basically what digital branding does is using all these key factors right it builds an image an equity for your brand to help engage your customers and build stronger recall and relationships while marketing is a, a method to actually reach your consumers and get leads and sell through them so basically these are the this is the key key differentiator in terms of what digital branding and digital marketing is marketing is basically here i've given a very simple uh, approach on how we collect leads is basically through a click form fill and a conversion so this is what majority of the brands are doing these days right they are targeting you by capturing your cookies uh, when you visit their websites or when you uh, go to certain uh, specific genres where they are targeting and then basically they capture your cookies and then they retarget 
This is one clear differentiating statement that I've mentioned here, which states branding is designing how to communicate and deliver your promise to potential customers while marketing is how you reach them. So this is basically the key key differentiating factor uh, that you all can see. Digital traits that build brands, uh, if there are three things, right? One is promise, performance, and positioning. So uh, this is something that makes your brand, it's basically the promise comprises of what What's your unique offering and who is it for? So whatever marketing communication we do or any form of marketing activation that is designed by any brand managers, it's always focused on the unique offering, whether it's a tactical ad or whether it's a brand campaign or uh, whether it's just some offer that they're releasing. So that is one. And who is it for? So who is your target audience is key because once you build the personas, it's how you uh, create content which is customized for different personas and target to them. Second is your positioning. It's how will you communicate your brand's promise. So whatever promise that you are offering, how is it that you will communicate? So we use a lot of media agencies, ad agencies, research agencies who help us devise our communication positioning as well as uh, media strategies, right? So uh, this is something basically that we work very closely with our research teams with uh, and other uh, agency partners. Performance is something basically once you launch your entire campaign and then you want to see how basically your promise was uh, uh, consumed by the different audience sets that you targeted to is something that performance covers. So capturing this in a nutshell is basically, I've kept certain points on the right, which say a brand consists of uh, a narrative. So uh, your brand narrative has to be very strong. Uh, the storytelling uh, method is something that works best. Today, uh, people have very less retention spans online because there's a plethora of content that's available. And how do you have a strong narrative that's built for your brand so that you capture attention is key. Uh, second point, uh, which is a must have trait is you have to be available because as a brand, uh, you are responsible for meeting customer expectations. So social listening and online reputation management is a very key factor. Uh, to basically uh, uh, have as a brand manager or as a leader in any industry. Uh, because until and unless you don't know what your customers are speaking about you, uh, and if you're not available when they are asking for you, it becomes a huge problem. I mean, something as relatable as uh, during COVID times, right? I'm sure if you all had booked travel somewhere and you all were flying places and there were ticket cancellations and all of that. So you all didn't know where to go to. So basically brands were there, they were listening and they were providing advice and they, they still do till today. Uh, so I think that is a key, key uh, trait that you have to be available for your consumers. Uh, the third is nurture your community ownership. It's not all about you. Uh, I have learned this at the very beginning of my career when I worked on uh, big brands uh, at Edelman and then Audi and now Henkel, that basically whenever we communicate our brand proposition or offering, it's always about putting the consumer first. It's about showcasing how uh, they will benefit from you and we have to nurture the community, uh, basically, whether it's luxury car buyers or whether it's some industrial audiences who are basically looking at construction equipment, for example. So basically, you have to identify your TG and work towards that and offer value for free, basically giving advice, tips and tricks. So uh, this happens a lot with uh, Henkel, right? We have a lot of master classes uh, that we have for different uh, audience sets because our products are uh, very niche and they target towards a huge industrial uh, sector. So uh, knowing how to use them is uh, a very detailed kind of an approach that we provide through tutorials uh, where our technical sales engineers uh, basically have master classes, we have webinars and we offer uh, different you know, tips and tricks. Uh, moving on, uh, we'll take questions later. So I'm just going into the whole flow of it. Uh, moving on to devising an effective digital uh, branding strategy. Some key elements are your brand's logo, right? It's a very strong symbolization of 
your business and product and basically how it relates to your target audience so uh, something as simple like a starbucks uh, you know coffee that you hold in your hand it's all about the value of the logo you can buy an any other coffee but why is it that starbucks is so special it's basically because they relate to you they have uh, they write your name on every cup right so it's something that is as uh, personalized as that can get so the logo is key uh second is the brand story uh your story has to be emotional and it has to connect with the consumers for whatever offering it is that you may have and uh, developing good stories is something that i have done for the past 9 years of my career and uh, i love storytelling and i think this is what is the key in the digital media and advertising industry today uh, your business website is something which is your face your brand's face to the consumer online right because they uh, while they may walk into your store but the website is something which is someone has uh, raised the yes someone has a question uh, we'll address this one towards end of yeah, it uh, yeah sure 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 do Yeah. Basically, the business website, and then uh, next is moving on is the brand messaging and audience persona. Creating a brand message that resonates with our audience and our goals is uh, something that is very essential. Uh, I have always worked in an approach where uh, I have created certain personas of say luxury audiences. Say we uh, in Audi, for example, the A3 uh, and A4 are at a lower range than your say maybe a Q7 or an A8, right? So every different car. Uh, has a different audience persona and that's how we used to conduct a lot of researches with the dealership marketing managers where they used to capture a lot of data from uh, different customers of different uh, cars whether it's a sedan or whether it's a sportback or whether it's your uh, say uh, suv range like your uh, q5 q7 and all of those cars or whether it's premium luxury like your uh, rs range so uh every uh, audience uh, set used to be targeted with a very different kind of messaging uh, there's this one atl campaign that we had done the a8 is a 1 crore plus car and uh, we had done this entire dynamic creative optimization campaign with google where we targeted different uh, communication sets to different people at different time of the day so someone was served a different ad in the morning or when they are on their way to work when they are on their way back we had showcased the a8 basically has a massage feature so we showcase like when you are on your way back how you can you know basically have that kind of comfort and luxury so very customized content and uh, very targeted is one approach that we took seo is very essential uh, it's basically having an organic ranking and uh, ranking to your brand's website so this is not your paid media uh, but this is helping Uh, by increasing the quantity of your uh, keywords organically by different blogs and native content so that is basically seo social media and email marketing is uh, something that uh, i have worked on extensively at audi and uh, the previous edelman agency where we uh, used to basically put in content every single day to engage and entice our audiences content is key uh, and it's not only content that you post it's about influencer associations right because today it's all about micro influencers and how these industry experts talk about you uh, rather than you boasting about what your brand has to offer so that is the other aspect online advertising is branding through your display ads which i'll take you all through in further detail uh this is a model which is something that helps helps brand managers uh, like me to basically devise our entire communication strategy I'm just sorry yeah so basically uh, it was uh, created by uh, a writer and speaker pr smith for his marketing firm uh, it basically first being situation analysis it's about understanding where we are now so taking an example of a launch campaign right whenever we used to launch uh, say for example a new car so uh, we firstly we identify uh, 
you know what is our current audience set what are our basic uh, brand messaging that we want to showcase uh, we find out basically uh, the consumers of the say for example similar segment or we understand competition segments like say for example we used to study mercedes and bmw very closely to basically devise any strategy so uh, these are certain things that we have to capture at where we are now uh second being objectives where we want to be so basically say for example by launching the car what is the vision right uh do we want to basically increase our sales or do we want a higher awareness to happen and what are the key kpis that we will be looking at for measuring our effectiveness in marketing is the uh, place where we set objectives for these objectives are then briefed upon to the agency basically there's a clear brief that is done and brief to different teams which is your media agency your create your lead creative agency then they work together to basically create an entire launch plan for you which is a pre launch launch and the sustenance plan so basically if they'll uh, they'll send you the content if you have to create a launch then how do you do it online whether you take certain live platforms uh, like your facebook live youtube live and all of that is something that we work extensively on we see whether there's a need to establish this and accordingly a media plan is created uh, creatives are designed basis the media plan for various publishers and fourth is basically uh, tactics and action what we need to get uh, basically what we need to get there right so uh, this is basically actually having the calendar in place that when do your channels go live uh, what content goes live on which platform so it's as detailed as that and then control is once everything is live and running uh we keep monitoring uh, specifically digital allows you to keep monitoring on a day to day basis and you can optimize your performance cam ca campaigns real time right so that is what we basically do through uh, this entire approach moving on to sustainable digital strategies uh, what's very important in a digital strategy is you have to define and focus on your mission you need to have a very clear understanding of basically what is motivating the change and how you want to be seen as a company you have to be transparent uh, you have to be authentic as a, a key brand player in the market and whether it's addressing environmental issues or whether it's addressing any consumer complaints you have to basically build that trust uh, mm -hmm. in your audiences and value proposition of course is basically whatever price uh, your positioning your product at right you have to make the customer understand that there is value in investment in, in basically is investment so these are certain key uh, things from a strategy aspect this slide is something basically i just uh, put here so that i can show to you all the impact that these brands specifically have created right uh, this bottle of bislery like you know uh, today you call in any mineral water as a bislery uh, then if you see the second machine which is basically your backhoe but everybody calls it a jcb in the construction industry uh, a cadbury chocolate for example you would maybe want an nestle but you'll still go and ask for cadbury uh, xerox in itself is a company who basically we started ca calling photocopies as xerox google and paytm have literally become like verbs right if you see you say google it or paytm karo so these are certain uh, significant uh, brand uh, related transformation or brand related recalls uh, sorry is a better word which basically uh, these kind of brands companies have created company strategies uh, is the next uh, you know detail the i'll take you all through this in detail uh, basically what are the strategies that companies do uh, today in the digital ecosystem uh, i have picked up certain brands which are indian and global i'll uh, show you all certain examples of it uh, just let me see if the video is working uh, okay before that i'll take you all through the marketing funnel basically uh, this is what we basically look at uh, whenever we design any marketing approach right uh, one is uh, your building salience 
which is your top of funnel approach uh, it's creating awareness uh, basically and it's focused on your say a lot of social media blogs webinars are some examples that have been mentioned at the right the mid funnel approach is uh, they say mofu is uh, something where you create uh, you know the desire and interest and uh, a lot of brands basically do this through pushing certain paid media advertising putting relevant case histories uh, or case studies of their services and lastly is the bottom of funnel approach which uh, we focus on very heavily in terms of conversions so uh, every campaign is built on these objectives and we have to uh, very clearly brief the agencies on what is it that we desire uh, in terms of the final outcome of the campaign i'll just try playing the video let me know if you all can hear otherwise i'll stop sh sharing and start again what does luxury mean to you can you hear we can hear okay so this is a campaign by incredible india uh, i'll just luxury in india i discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf true luxury is a feeling that you are the maharani of your world and it can be all designed around you all the beauty is yours all the music is yours india showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands true luxury follows its own heart incredible india what does luxury so it's beautiful right how even india the country that we live in is a brand in itself and uh, this is a great campaign that uh, is done by the tourism ministry of india basically by government of india and it's been done since 2002 to promote and push tourism uh, for india if you see even the logo right the exclamation mark is beautifully used for india to showcase uh, the amount of excitement and thrill that the country brings to you and if you visit their uh, website or any of their social media pages you will see they post the content frequency basically is so good like uh, they are almost like live uh, every 2 3 days and it's all about striking visuals and creating a strong emotional connect which creates such a strong impact right and uh, that's what uh, incredible india has done uh, basically what tourism uh, what the tourism ministry of india has done and their content is really mesmerizing so if you all ha have a chance please do go and explore this is another uh, campaign ye kya karti rehti ho tum na pankhe mein khush hi jao कोई क्यों रोके कोई क्यों टोके तेरी उड़ान तूने पहचानी कर वो जो तूने है ठानी कोई क्यों रोके खुद लिख एक नई कहानी तेरी उड़ान तूने पहचाने अड़चने आई कितनी अटकलें लगाई कितनी है बुलंद तेरी जुबानी तूने अपनी जिम्मेदारी हर पल है जानी खुद लिख एक नई कहानी
तू चले जैसे बहता पानी तेरी उड़ान तूने पहचानी कहानी कोई भी हो तुम ही हो नायिका तुम ही हो नायिका सो दिस वॉज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल कैंपेन डन बाय नायिका विच वॉज कहानी कोई भी हो तुम ही हो नायिका एंड इफ यू सी राइट देर आर डिफरेंट वुमेन दैट हैव बीन पोर्ट्रेड यूर वन इज अ ट्रांसजेंडर डॉक्टर बाइकर सो डिफरेंट वुमेन हु हैव डिफरेंट स्टोरीज इन लाइफ बट हु टेकन कंट्रोल ऑफ देयर ओन स्टोरीज एंड हाउ दे हैव ट्रेवल्ड देयर ओन रोड एंड बेसिकली अल्टीमेटली वॉट बॉन्स देम ऑल टूगेदर इज देयर final achievement right they have all achieved big things in their own life story so that is what basically they focused on how basically this uh, ad has, and this brand communication through all these different women in their own uh, spaces have basically become the heroes of their own story i would say so it's it's very beautiful uh, moving on uh, basically we've seen that uh, today right we keep scrolling a lot over our instagram feeds or youtube or uh, whatever right even whatsapp for that matter we are looking for thumb stopping and snackable content and that's what even brands need to focus on because uh, they are targeting to nobody but consumers like you and me and basically i'll take you all through certain case studies uh, that i have worked on at audi india starting with this video in particular so basically uh, this campaign right uh, uh, the audi campaign audi audi so what we did here was uh, uh, i had conceptualized it uh, during the initial stages of my career and it's very close to my heart we used to use a lot of content uh, that used to come in from our global teams and mostly this is what happens in global brands uh, and international brands right uh, the the india specific teams just adapt a lot of content that comes in from global uh we have very limited uh, rights to basically create content on our own due to different uh, guidelines that are there in place uh, global brands have very strong uh, corporate identity guidelines so uh, the cdci needs to be maintained and all of that but we really pushed this campaign because we wanted to connect uh, very closely to our audience uh, who basically irrespective which state they are from right and how they pronounce uh, audi as a brand so actually it's pronounced as audi but uh, we uh, seen that people call it even char chadle char chudia so we wanted to say whatever you say it doesn't matter it's ultimately we are a brand for you and for your luxury uh, travel requirements right so basically this is how we conceptualized uh, this entire campaign we activated it across digital touch points we even had the search uh, uh you know audio related campaign that was on for this particular campaign so it was quite interesting uh moving on uh when we launched the audi a6 uh the first change that was uh, witnessed was basically it was it moved from a button uh, car to a buttonless uh, car which is what you see in the right here uh it was a complete digital dashboard that was introduced so we created a very short uh, you know content format uh on social media through the facebook ads uh, through the facebook team support where we did something like this i'll just play it so if you see the buttons from top fall down and then they create this entire digital panel so this was something very cool that uh, you know i had done when i was at audi and uh, moving on uh, there are some uh, exciting pieces that we 
uh, kept uh, doing uh, for engaging uh, our basically fan base like audi has a huge fan base i used to get messages from uh, so many people you know where they used to actually sketch uh, the sports cars and send me and then we used to basically of course recognize their contribution and even send them a lot of gifts so uh, we have run a lot of competitions and engagement uh, campaigns at audi to build a strong connect with our fan base as well so this is one such campaign i'll quickly uh, it, it, it was run for diwali when we launched the audi q2 we launched it with a lot of uh, this is basically a diwali related ad film where we created a huge rangoli and a q2 was basically positioned as a young and dynamic car right so basically this is about that so basically we used to try to speak to our audience quite a lot and uh, we still do uh, so audi still does this basically because uh, until and unless you have a strong connect right uh, you cannot talk to your audiences and you can't resonate with uh, their feelings so basically this is something that we kept doing uh, topical content was something which we used to have a lot of fun with say for example here if you see uh, during the matches basically who will win the battle of champions india versus australia we ran this hashtag for pushing boundaries and we kept two cars right uh, for india the blue color and for australia the yellow so it's something that uh, you know just used to drive us and uh, these are fun story content pieces that we used to create this is something which is basically a very key uh, uh, factor for brands right who uh, focus on building their digi digital strategies uh, one is enticing your customer experience and uh, second is simplifying your ui uh, i'll just basically show you on uh, how we do it the screen has changed right uh, professor yes absolutely yeah. you can see that yeah. so basically this is the website that's designed for the 3d view of the audi e-tron and you all can see how seamlessly it's done right uh, and this is what basically brands need to look at to provide as much uh, digital assistance uh, to their audiences online so this is the exterior you can even see the interiors from basically your uh, laptop or mobile screen so everything is basically very very seamlessly and nicely done you can change the colors and basically explore and we've seen in the past also right, like i used to keep reading a lot of google reports on the auto industry right uh, so we've seen that 90% of our consumers used to research online uh, before you know taking a test drive of a car so whether it's uh, reviewing your overdrive auto car or any other portal uh they basically do a lot of research and that is seen in studies also and then basically this is something which uh, talks about the features details so you can go and explore this site it's on the audi india homepage itself uh just going back uh so and then this is basically uh, something if you scan this code uh, you will be able to have your uh, e-tron within your home also so basically on your table or on your uh, couch wherever it is uh, or in your say parking area it actually gives you the feel of basically exploring the car through augmented reality and brands have been picking on this uh, quite heavily uh, in terms of the digital marketing strategy that i used at audi uh, and basically which i use at henkel also i fo i've always focused on uh, basically these are the key platforms right which are available your search display programmatic social video and other avenues i'll take you all through this in some uh, in a detailed format so that you all are aware of the different uh, avenues available it's all about creating immersive ad experiences and we do that through uh, various uh, strategies so first being search engine marketing and google display advertising uh, 
uh, we basically pushed uh, huge amounts of investments in terms of uh, ensuring that we are always present whenever an audience is searching for you and i think that is the key for every uh, brand uh, today to basically be present when someone is looking for you because these are high intent audiences right so search plays a very important role and as of 2022 in jan we've seen basically that every day there are more than 8.5 billion searches that are happening so that shows the potential of this as a medium and a platform and why it's basically necessary to be present here so uh, whichever marketing uh, strategy that we kind of implement we ensure that uh, while an awareness strategy is also there you're not losing out on your in market audiences when they're searching for you so that this is key uh, display network is basically google has multiple uh, websites which are associated with it which in our say your uh, finance news uh, gmail youtube all of these also basically uh, your ads are seen on as a display ad unit i've put in certain examples then there are third party display ads that uh, basically uh, we do uh, we advertise through programmatic on a third party publisher so there are many aggregators available in the market there's inmobi there's uh, i have the m canvas so these uh, help you uh, have very specific target filters added before going live and uh, they give you certain audience sets whether it's luxury travelers whether it's b2b industrial audiences design engineers manufacturing engineers and you can basically target it uh, to them through the third party uh, uh websites so basically we we worked on certain things this is one small example of how we used audi merchandise ads also to sell uh, via the audi shop so audi has an audi uh, shop uh, e-commerce platform where we basically sell various audi merchandises and uh, we basically use that to promote uh, it as well uh program video plays a very important role uh, today in terms of digital we've seen that video is key and uh, we've uh, always invested on whatever content marketing that strategy that we are creating we ensure that there's at least some video format to push for awareness and uh, after basically the video plays right we redirect them either to the website or we give a form fill so youtube has various ad formats which are like 6 second bumpers for shorter retention it also allows uh, different pre roll and mid roll ads right so we tried all of those uh, impact properties uh, as well where we've taken the whole uh, uh, mast head basically where we've pushed content so while that is expensive it's basis on whatever approach we want to take if it's a huge launch then we focus on such impact buys like your mast heads if there is shorter format contents then we look at such bumper ads and all of that social media marketing you all all must be aware because you will be on one social media platform or the other uh, there are various facebook and instagram ads story formats carousel ads that we can explore linkedin gives you the benefit of having in mail ads right so we used to do a lot of tactical in mail ads there i currently run a lot of in mail ads targeted to design engineers and production managers at the plants and uh, you know various quality control and maintenance engineers as well at henkel for my adhesives uh, products so uh, this is the kind of you know opportunity that the platform gives you uh, specifically in terms of linkedin you can target designations in certain industries uh, twitter of course is a medium which is like within few words it conveys a lot right so we we're always present there as well uh other avenues uh, moving on to this is basically your ott platforms uh influencer activations it's all about micro influencers these days so uh whether it's say pushing your uh, luxury car or it's uh, about pushing uh, say your cosmetic product it's about finding people who will actually use your particular uh, you know service or product and then talk about it rather than have big actors and celebrities uh, push your content and that's what we've done right we've uh, used uh, the 
captain of uh, the indian cricket team virat kohli seamlessly because he stands for everything that audi stands for uh, whether it's young sporty progressive as a brand and so does his image so it's that kind of resonance that we have to look for in influencers if we are planning this kind of an approach native content partnerships of course help because uh, these uh, formats help you write uh in detail about your brand and service and we basically invested a lot here as well and impact buys are digital sponsorships basically like here you can see audi has partnered with coffee with karan uh, season 7 as a driving partner and uh, even uh, basically at henkel what we do is uh, we've uh, partnered with a lot of industrial expos uh, to push our uh, products and benefits moving on to some international campaigns uh, this is an ad uh, of basically this is a video basically which showcases how uh, very recently there was a uh, partnership between gucci and adidas uh, and they created this entire capsule and this is a very interesting video because it's a partnership of one of its kind so i'll just quickly play it. it's human nature to want to know what's around the corner So I keep looking. Adidas, X, Gucci. Everything, everybody, all the time. I live in that fine line between genius and obsession. Love is a kind of ritual and a language we learn to speak. Image is what we get lost in. truth is the superpower we escape with adidas x kuchi one rule that i live by you've got to be kind when your thoughts become reality you understand what magic is adidas x kuchi this was conceptualized by the creative director of gucci called alistra alessandro michel uh, it basically uh, merges the two big houses right uh, the luxury iconic gucci and the iconic sportswear brand adidas basically they uh, showcased how with the pieces crafted beautifully with polyester cotton and viscous they've reduced its environmental impact and they've focused on sustainability Uh, and commitment towards sustainability basically is on uh, display here and they've done it seamlessly right i mean you you would have seen a lot of posts with deepika and ranveer walking out of the airport and uh, endorsing this uh, in a very subtle way so this is the kind of uh, you know collaborations also that brands do strategically to showcase uh, a better kind of uh, association together so this is of one such kind Uh, B2B brands also have a lot of impact nowadays. It's not that uh, this industry is far behind; it's picking up uh, in a very fast way. And I'll showcase some uh, work done by Loctite specifically globally. Three grams of adhesive. One hour. Two hundred eight tons. Only one brand can make that math work. Loctite Universal Structural Bonders, so strong, versatile, and durable. There's no limit to what they can do. So this entire limitless bonding approach is what Loctite has taken, and uh, that's basically uh, what this brand stands for, right? Our uh, chemical en uh, engineers and scientists at Loctite and Henkel have basically, uh, you know, showcased the impact by showing the full. Uh, tensile strength of this entire uh, you know adhesive applied to this uh, space so you know uh, i think it's really marvelous what limitless bonding is and how they've positioned it as limitless is uh, something that uh, loctite stands for 
and of course we try to create a lot of communication in india as well but this is one global example uh, this is one very interesting way to be jsw steels how they are running ads for their stainless steel sheet metal so i'll just play this quickly so just see the beauty of it, beauty of it right how uh, a company who is selling stainless steel sheet metals online it's got the thickness with everything that you can enter and uh, it's something that you wouldn't even dream of right that why would someone sell sheet metal but this is where even indian b2b brands are moving towards and there's a huge scope for it these are some key uh, you know uh, a b2b brands which have started their own marketplace uh, where they are selling their own industrial products so whether it's lnt's marketplace uh, whether it's uh, a marketplace by uh, atlas copco skf bearings has started this bosch has launched their new e-commerce website and even dow chemicals so scope is huge it's not only e-commerce brands like nike or say uh, you know many automobile brands have launched uh, they are uh, selling their cars online like even skoda has done it so basically even b2b brands are getting into this space which was not uh, very visible earlier because this space is all about trying testing and then believing but uh, if you see with the kind of uh, investments they have done in the e Uh, stores it's huge and this will only grow so basically here we've seen right that brands have uh, started investing and they're not only investing on basic dig digital methods they have even uh, entered the entire metaverse space and you you all would have heard of metaverse quite a lot uh, so i'll basically quickly show you all a video since we are sh uh, short on time but i'll just uh, skip through it uh, quickly This is done by Hyundai, so I'll just take you all through the uh, better part. this is done by hyundai globally and even uh, mg motors has launched their mg verse where you can go and try and test their cars uh, the mahindra scorpio that had launched uh, recently also did a launch through metaverse so they have basically uh, brands are just going uh, extensively on this and this will just grow in the near future uh, moving on to consumer analytics uh, in the digital ecosystem uh we've seen different ad campaigns right uh, that i took you all through and we've also seen uh, basically how different uh, uh, brands are uh, utilizing digital content and uh, uh, digital ad formats to basically convey their messages to their consumers so basically uh, we need to then as brands understand how to utilize this data because uh, 
we through ads through our content we have a lot of uh, analysis that can be done and that is what uh, we do in consumer analytics uh, whatever leads we get are on a lead management system i have used salesforce for a very long time and uh, we try and see uh, whether they are uh, Uh, certain pin codes or whether there are certain email ids phone numbers that we can use to create custom audience sets uh, and target them again on different social media platforms we create a lot of look alike and affinity audiences uh, by uploading these custom audiences uh, these are tools that are readily available with google linkedin facebook Uh, wherein we create similar personas and then target our communication to them so data driven marketing has risen tremendously and uh, if you're a brand manager today it's all about driving your ads or your content uh, with the help of data uh, i recently did this entire research last week for loctite where we uh, had these mini group discussions and it's so helpful uh, basically to see the outcomes of these analysis and then strategize your communication accordingly right so this is something that is key and uh, we notice that today's consumer is very curious demanding and impatient so we need to basically catch uh, this kind of consumers attention so it's very essential that we first capture data and then devise a strategy basis that data so uh, these these factors really help understand Uh, we use a lot of uh, research uh, studies uh, and uh, basically we conduct a lot of researches as well global researches are also done uh, for my for different brands that i've worked on but i've commissioned india specific research studies also where we've seen that specifically on digital online has replaced word of mouth and video is uh, basically increasingly been consumed and even walk ins at stores are dropping right so the digital influence is key so as a digital marketing lead uh, it's very crucial for me to understand their behavior and accordingly develop a 360 degree digital marketing strategy and be omnipresent across their digital touch points so creating a seamless journey based on data and uh, uh, analytics is something that uh, i work on uh, towards so that i have a, a right tg otherwise the lead qualification ratio drops the cost per order is very high and even the cost of acquisition increases so uh, with everything that we've learned so far what we do is uh, use all our data points to have targeting at scale we use first party data first party data is nothing but the data that brands have for their audiences and uh, basically uh, what else Uh, contextual targeting is something that uh, we target through keywords and uh, then basically the uh, programmatic uh, ad campaign i'll take you through a programmatic ad video multi level audience cohorts are something that basically we use uh, for targeting certain genres like whether it's banking and finance whether it's auto uh, target segments or it's entertainment so these are a couple of uh, points that we use through consumer analytics and this is one of the video that i'll play basically so that you all understand how we use consumer research for programmatic we are at the dawn of the screen age screens surround us everywhere and the one in our pocket is our constant companion with screens all around us digital advertising is soon to be everywhere and one digital ad format is at the forefront of winning consumer attention and advertiser budget video The screen age is fast becoming the age of digital video advertising. Programmatic can help, but how does it work? In this hyper-connected digital ad age, all advertising is becoming programmatic. Programmatic advertising links content providers and advertisers with consumers in real time to deliver the right message at the right time, in the right place, and in the right format. In the blink of an eye, A programmatic platform can connect video inventory to audiences across any screen and any ad format, including smart TVs, in app environments, or on existing video platforms. In a matter of milliseconds, it can connect advertisers with consumer eyeballs by inserting video ads into existing video content or place video ads in premium text-based editorial content. 
Incorporating video into your advertising strategy means offering audiences a frictionless ad experience and advertisers a format they crave. Enter the screen age with 360 Polaris. So that's what they talk about, right? The screen age. So using your data to target people at the right time, uh, at the right medium which they are consuming, and uh, with the right content is basically what helps us uh, drive effective communication through detailed consumer analytics and strategy. Uh, lastly, to end with, uh, transformation can only take place immediately, right? Uh, so I believe in that every single day and uh, we work towards creating uh, new uh, technologies, new experiences for our consumers to effectively reach out to us and uh, have solutions to whatever it is that they're looking for. And uh, that's what we work towards. So we believe that the revolution is now and not tomorrow. So every single day, uh, I put in a lot of effort to make things work. And it's always a learning, right? So uh, it's not that uh, I have done something very exceptional today, but I've learned uh, from everything that is done so far. And I, whatever it is that I do is for a better tomorrow. So that's it from me, I think we're just uh, over time so over to you doctor if there are any questions we can address yeah yeah absolutely thank you so much uh, uh, um, you know Rina, and it's absolutely very insightful and quite a download in fact on uh, you know the brand management of the digital world with all the anecdotal evidences and we do have a few questions and let's see how many we can take uh, depending on the time and let me just start uh, with the first question if that's okay with you Rina. can i yes yes yeah, good. So this is a question from Mr. Puneet Agarwal, and his question, in fact, is uh, what are all the methods to identify what to offer? Uh, and, uh, you know, his, his thing is that he's also adding that there must be some scientific method to identify what to offer. Thank you, Puneet. Scientific methods, uh, what to offer, Puneet, is basically uh, it depends on what your brand is, right? Uh, it depends on what your product offering is. So, uh, First is basically finding out that and then how you want to offer it. There would be various uh, studies that have been conducted so far. Like we saw the SO, uh, uh, SOS stack model, for example. So that basically helps you go into quite some detail in terms of, you know, where you are at, what you want to do. But uh, like scientific uh, model, can he talk about it, sir, in detail? I, I didn't really get it. I'm not sure uh, uh, we can do it now. I think uh, in case there's something else, uh, please do put uh, uh, in the chat box, right? Uh, so that we yeah. can take uh, other questions, right? And uh, 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 this is the question from Mr. Uh, uh, Jagdish Badla. And uh, his question is, say tomorrow I go for a startup. How do I build my brand in the market? What steps should I take? Thank you, Jagdish. And then this is an interesting question. So uh, I uh, this. A startup is a very different business altogether, right? And uh, currently what I'm doing actually, Jagdish, is uh, I am called like a corporate startupper itself in my own company because we are a digital incubator. And what we're doing is basically the industry that I'm currently working in, right, is not that digitally savvy and neither are our consumers. So uh, what uh, we do basically is something like a startup itself. We are trying very basic methods, which are hygiene methods of digital advertising, because whatever your business may be that you look at starting up in future, it is key to basically know of who is it that you want to target and how you want to target, understand their behavior on digital, uh, what are the touch points that they would be on and how is it that you can start with smaller budgets, uh, basically in terms of uh, search, social media marketing. These are things that you can look at starting off with to build awareness for your brand. Because once the awareness is done, then you can further go on to uh, spending more higher on digital media or digital marketing. And this is a very uh, specific question from... Uh, Pritam, and we just put it now, but uh, you know, his question is if I want to build a brand on Agribati, that incense sticks, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, how can I market, uh, how can I mark, you know, go about doing the marketing, uh, uh, right, competing with the reputed companies? Very Pritam, interesting. 
<laughs> Very interesting, Pritam, right? You mentioned. Yeah, Pritam. Yeah, Pritam. Pritam, we were actually discussing about this last week, me and my colleagues at Henkel, because we supply adhesives to many manufacturers, right? And the Agarbati machine itself is a very low investment. Uh, I think it's hardly for three to uh, three lakhs. I think is what the machine cost is. So, or even lower. So it depends on the brands. So, an essence stick can easily be manufactured and within a very small space. And how you market it is the similar approaches like I showed you all, right? All these brands, whether local or international, they are creating a value for their customers through their communication. And why would someone invest in you? Because there are already numerous Agarbati brands which are like Cycle. And even I recently went to Munar and there was a green tea Agarbati, sir, that I found. Yeah. So, <laughs> The kind of customization uh, that's available uh, in this category is also rising. But yeah, if you market it effectively, because I've not seen any Agarwati ads, to be honest, but if you position it in a very different way, or if you have some story, like all these brands that I showed you all, right, whether it's the bigger brands or the newly, uh, uh, you know, newer entrants, they all have a very strong story to tell. And you can create stories, you can create innovating content that basically uh, captures user attention. And that would just help. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, you know, so uh, we, we have two questions from Mr. Sunil Joshi and the first question is uh, how to create brand image in the Me Too type of product, uh, any success story, any success story thereof. And the second question is what should be the brand budget uh, as a percentage to sales at uh, the launch stage? Thank you, Sunil. Okay. So uh, the first question basically uh, for a Me Too kind of a product, right? We've seen yeah. that. Uh, there are so many uh, uh, co competition segments, right? You take any category, you have a, a similar product. So uh, identifying what your competition is doing and basically ensuring that you are present wherever your competition searches are being done is something that we focus on digitally. We bid on competition keywords. We uh, ensure that we bid on category related keywords when it comes to uh, say your search engine marketing strategy. So uh, say for example, Loctite, uh, we try to move uh, users from who are using conventional methods of manufacturing, say a welding rod, for example. So whenever someone searches for a welding rod, we'll ensure that we are also present. So basically, Me Too is something that you have to understand what your competition is doing and showcase your value and benefit in a better way. And uh, in terms of the advertising budget is that he asked, right, in terms of sales. Second question was that, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How much should we invest? Yeah, uh, at the launch stage, you know, what should be the brand budget vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know, percentage terms to sales at the launch stage? Okay, so this varies uh, from industry to industry because, uh, say, for example, for a category like auto, right, at the launch stage, we spend huge amount of monies because uh, we want to create a mass awareness. We tie up with celebrities, influencers, uh, and we go all out, right? The event is all PR journalists are called. They're given a very fancy treatment. So uh, I wouldn't say there's any percentage uh, in terms of sales as such that we decide. We have certain benchmarks from previous years or we focus on how we want to go about in terms of our brand positioning strategy. Say, for example, if I have to sell uh, Q7s this year, so my entire marketing budget will be split in such a way that I will focus on a particular model vis-a-vis -vis the other campaigns. So it's got nothing to do with sales forecast, but it's more in terms of uh, the brand campaign. Great. So I think uh, with your permission, I'll take two questions of uh, uh, two more questions, if it's okay with you, Rina. Yes, yes. And the one is from Ragini, other one is from uh, Priyanka. And the Ragini's question is, in B2B space, what are some of the ways, uh, you know, that smaller companies who supply to larger ones can build uh, brands on digital? Thank you, Ragini. Yeah. So what has she said? Smaller companies? Uh... We, which are supplying to the bigger ones. And okay. how can they build, uh, you know, brands on large, you know, on the digital platforms? Right, right. So basically, we uh, work with a lot of MSMEs, right, to uh, supply to them. And uh, if it's something like that, which is in a reverse way, uh, I think they uh, should basically definitely have a very strong uh, distributor approach. It can't be only digitally because what happens is bigger companies are tied up with distributors and distributors are generally the ones who are 
managing all these smaller companies they are uh, giving them our products and all of that so having good relations with them is one and then of course if it has to be activated digitally i think everyone needs to have a digital identity no matter how small a size of a company you are even if you have uh, say a whatsapp channel or say for example uh, email marketing communication where they can send out to bigger uh, say pro there are procurement managers in bigger companies right so how do they reach out to them effectively is something that they can even look at through linkedin linkedin allows you to connect through different uh, procurement uh, related designations so you can send targeted in mails to these bigger companies procurement managers and then target uh, your whatever offering that the smaller companies would have to them so i think this is uh, one way that we can reach yes and uh, the last question for today evening uh, um, we are sorry i think we have exceeded time no problem this is sir. from uh, priyanka survey and her question is how is digital marketing different for a brand versus a, a, for a, a known celebrity in a leadership role can you give us some examples thank you priyanka for a brand versus a uh, celebrity celebrity right? yeah in a leadership role yeah so uh, we've covered brands quite extensively right in terms of a celebrity or whether he's a government or prime minister like for our uh, mr modi if you see right he in himself is a huge brand so how basically they communicate uh, to audiences their frequency of posting messaging creating an influence is something which uh, i have also worked on right i've handled uh, basically accounts of Uh, leaders in the industry wherein we try to kind of portray a very different format of communication uh, celebrities talk about basically uh, you know they are own uh, say for example investments that they are doing in terms of movies it's a very personal touch vis-a-vis your brand talks about how they impact the society how they impact businesses how they basically build communities whereas a celebrity's marketing is very different it's very promotional to uh, himself and uh, i think that is done through the same digital platform so while the platforms remain the content is very unique and different thank you so much i think we have literally watched out the time no and re- really appreciate your time uh, you know and uh, like you said it's quite uh, uh, not just a uh, very progressive content but also rich in terms of uh, very few i think actionable insights i'm in fact uh, we are extremely sorry that we couldn't take uh, most of the questions uh, because of uh, lack of time but then nevertheless we will relate these questions to arena uh, uh, very i mean immediately after this one and we'll also uh, uh, make sure that this uh, uh, ppt i mean the recording is made available on the elements so that uh, some of you who have missed or you want to you know visit this one you can go back and uh, you know look at it thank you so much once again reena for your time especially thank on you. a sunday evening and uh, most important thing the kind of time that you have taken to put this together not just your experience right I, i'm sure you know that could have been in a different way but i think uh, with all the you know the, what is it the moving parts together in terms of uh, very convincingly and how uh, different brands not just the btc but also in b2b how they are you know uh, lapping up their uh, digital journeys and quite very quite insightful even as recent as you know metaverse part of it thank you so much thank you so no much no problem thank you thank you for having me and thanks to everyone else who has joined it was a great a session for me to interact with all of you so thank, thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much